So welcome back, it's Monday, and yes, this week we've got a lot more stuff to walk through, and we're talking this week about how you surrender your relationships. And we really looked yesterday at the relationship test. How do you know that you might have some hard work to do? Well, the test is whenever, the well, the question is, can you embrace and celebrate other people or are you too busy thinking, hey, when do I get celebrated? If you find yourself in that situation, chances are you may be a little bit more lost than you realize or you may have some heart work that needs to be done. And we turn to the words of Jesus when he said, hey, think about others and think about things from their point of view and then grab the initiative and do it for them. We would call that the golden rule. And that's really how you begin to surrender in the area of relationships. Chances are, if relationships are a struggle for you, chances are maybe, um, if you haven't fully surrendered this area, you may view people as objects, things you leverage to get things for yourself. So we're just trying to give people some handles on how you surrender relationships, how you build relationships, and so from today till Thursday, we're going to give you 21 relationship principles. And we just hope it gives you handles. I, I can't, um, I think about when I was in middle school or high school, I didn't know this stuff. And I'm super happy to have families at home, uh, you know, walking through this. And, and, and hopefully you'll talk more about this whenever this whole session is over. So have you ever noticed that some people go through life and life is just a struggle for them? They're just, it's just hard for them. There's drama, there's uh, confusion, there's excuses to why things never get done. And yet other people in the same town, in the same school, there's a sense of calm, they appreciate others, and they're just able to get things done. Why do you think there's such a difference between the, the people in the same town, same school, same church, and, and some really have drama and others really have calm. Well, think about Jesus' teaching. The beginning of surrendering your relationships is about thinking of others. The one who has constant drama many times maybe might be struggling with thinking about others and how other people are, 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 are viewing the relationship. They might feel like they're very selfish and they're, they're focused on their own world. The one who has a sense of calm many times, maybe, they're a lot better at thinking about life through the eyes of someone else. There's a quote I wanna share with you before we jump into scripture. A gentleman by the name of Stanley Allen said this, this is a quote, the most useful person in the world today is the man or woman who knows how to get along with other people. Human relations is the most important science in living. And when I look at scripture, I think scripture says it better. This is how scripture says it. It's in James 3, verses 17 to 18. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with others. It is, a gentle, um, it is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings, not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoys its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. And so as we jump into these 21 relationship principles, that's what we're doing. We're trying to figure out the hard work of what it means of uh, to how to get along with each other. So what I want to do is I'm going to start today and uh, we're going to give you five principles today. And really the big, uh, the big question that we want to answer this uh, today is, are you ready to be in a relationship? Because I don't know if you thought about it, it's kind of simple, but to be in a healthy relationship means you're healthy. And so the five questions today really deal with that. Are you ready to be in a relationship? The first relationship principle I want to give you, it's called the lens principle. The lens principle. Who you are determines how you see others. And just think about that for a second. Who you are determines how you view others. I'm going to explain this with a story. There once was a man who had to leave his town and go to the next town. And so he packed up his things and he traveled over the mountain and he just got over the peak of the mountain and he comes upon uh, an old man resting um, along the side of the road. And the traveler asked the man, hey, 
what are the people in this, in this next town like? And the old man thought about it for a second. He said, sir, he said, tell me, what are the people like in the town you just left? And the man said, they were awful. They were jealous, gossipy. I couldn't wait to leave. So I'm so anxious to know about these people in the next town. And the old man said, I'm sorry to hear that, sir, because the people in this next town, they're exactly like the people in the town that you left. And not an hour later, another traveler going to the exact same town comes upon the old man and asks the same question. He said, I'm moving. I'm going to this new town. What are the people like? And the old man sat back and he asked the man, what were the people like in the town that you left? And he said, they were wonderful. They were loving. They were kind. It broke my heart that I had to leave. And the old man said to the traveler, sir, I have good news for you. The, the people in this town that you're going to, you're going to find that they're exactly the same. In general, how you view people is a huge indicator of who you are. And one of the great questions you can ask yourself is, in general, how do I view people? Am I suspicious of people? Uh, do, I think, uh, I, do I think they're loving and kind? Just a great principle to kind of wrestle with. Principle number two, am I ready to be in relationship? We would call it the mirror principle. The first person we must examine is ourselves. The mirror principle says, the first person we must examine is ourselves. When you struggle to be in a relationship or when a relationship goes bad, who do you blame? Before we blame others, the mirror principle would say, maybe we should look at ourselves first. Most relationship problems come from what we would call blind spots, areas in our lives that aren't pleasant and we really don't see them. Now, everybody else sees them and everybody else experiences them around us, but we don't see them because they're blind spots. We're blind to them. For example, if a person feels like they're insecure, they go through life and they may come across as controlling, right? And the people in their lives, they see that this person is controlling and they experience the pain of someone who's controlling. However, the insecure person doesn't see it. When they're confronted with it or when someone talks to them about it, they say, I'm just loving. I'm just trying to do the best for others. And so what happens? People can quietly withdraw from the controlling person. And so the insecure person struggles and doesn't understand where the relationships are. And they can end up blaming other people around them for broken relationships. So they look for a new spouse. They look for a new church. They look for a new workplace. Uh, they, they look for new friends. Many times what's happening is they don't see their blind spots. So the question is, who do you blame? when relationships are a struggle or when relationships go bad. In general, if you can conclude it's really everybody else's fault, it's really this town, it's really this school, it's, it's everybody, I need to go somewhere else, probably chances are you may have a blind spot. Number three, am I ready to be in a relationship? Number three, we call it the pain principle. Hurting people hurt people and are easily hurt. The pain principle says hurting people they hurt people and they are easily hurt. Sam would, uh, in addition to this principle, Sam would say, heal people, help heal people, and they're not easily hurt. This pain principle is a really important principle, especially whenever you're in middle school and high school and you go through life and you're trying to figure out why would someone hurt me so much? I've done nothing to hurt them. Why would they treat me this way? Well, the pain principle, they're probably hurting inside. And the reason they're so hurtful is because they're hurting. In general, hurting people's response to life is it's, they're larger than the real issue. For example, they overreact, they overexaggerate, they overprotect, overinfluence, and always kind of results in relationship drama. Why? Drama gets the reaction that they want. And drama is not a good foundation for a healthy relationship. I think um, one of the great questions we could ask ourselves is, do I hurt people and am I easily hurt? Number four, am I ready to be in a relationship? Number four, we call it the hammer principle. Never use a hammer to swat a fly off of someone's head. It's the hammer principle, right? Do you know people like this? In discussions, these people don't play by the rules. 
You want to talk calmly about what happened yesterday or today, but they respond with an emotional bomb. In arguments, the person with the hammer, they, they don't play by the rules. You want to talk about what happened today, it may be in an argument and kind of deal with it, but with passion and anger, they talk about what you've done wrong in the last five years, they kind of sandbag you. What happens? People who live with someone holding the hammer, they're scared, they cringe. They can be so rough with relationships, their spouses and their friends, they kind of avoid them because they don't want to deal with the hammer, right? We would also need to include sometimes the overreaction of emotions and wounds and crying. Sometimes if you want to talk to someone, you get this uh, over-the-top reaction and over-the-top woundedness, and it's really hard to, to, to deal with a person like that because they, they need some um, inner healing. And some, for some people around that person, it can be really, really draining. Here's a good question to process. Do people in general come to me? Do they talk to me? Or do people in general kind of stay away? Chances are maybe, look at this principle, do you feel like you are holding the hammer? Uh, are your responses kind of over the top? Number five, we call this the elevator principle. I love this principle. Are you ready to be in a relationship? Number five, the elevator principle. It says when you can lift people up or you can bring them down in your relationship. In general, there's four kinds of people in your life. There's um, what we would call subtractors. These people, they kind of take energy from you. They, they're always negative, they're always sarcastic. They're, they're, they're not good or bad, they just take energy from you. We also have people who are like dividers. They drain you. Uh, they complain, they gossip and, about other people and they just, they just divide relationships and their, their mode of living is just complaints and gossip. And, and But when you're done being with them, boy, it's more than just being drained. You just feel like there's problems and you're, you're divided. There are also um, adders. Adders in life, they desire to help people out. They, like, they make life better. You want to hang out with someone who adds things to your life. They're wonderful. And then there are the people we call multipliers. These people are amazing. They help you think new things. They give you energy. Every time you're with them, you just walk away from them refreshed and inspired, right? They force you to grow. They're multipliers. Now, I want you to think about this in all the relationships of your life. When people enter into a relationship with you, it's as if they're getting onto an elevator. And the question is, are you taking them up? Or are you taking them down? Do you um, so how does, that, how does that look for your friendships? Do you take them up? Do you drag them down? And so the question would be, you know, as a leader, do you take people up? Do you take them down? As a follower do you, or volunteer, do you take people up or do you take people down? Do you work on a team at work? What, what, what are people's experience like when you show up on the team? Do you kind of take that team and, and you help them go up or do you kind of drag them down? As I conclude today, the big question is, are you ready to be in a healthy relationship? Maybe you are, and maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's some hard work to do. Let's recap real quickly. The lens principle, who you are determines how you see others. The mirror principle, the first person we should probably examine is ourselves. The pain principle, hurting people hurt people and are easily hurt. The hammer principle, never use a hammer to swat a fly off of someone's forehead. The elevator principle, we can lift people up or we can take them down. So tomorrow we ask, am I ready to connect with others? Do I know how to connect with others? We'll see you then.